Alrighty, folks, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show with Drew Taylor. I am here with Mr. Blake Rizzo, and he is coordinating the Tour de Crypto, where folks are riding across the country on bicycles to raise awareness. And t tell us what all y'all are doing, Blake. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me on, first of all. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. But um, yeah, this is um, two gentlemen decided that they wanted to ride a bike across the United States as a personal goal, um, both involved in cryptocurrency and decided why not go ahead and um, use their tour to promote cryptocurrency donations to charitable organizations. Absolutely. They started, yeah, they started um, on Friday and they had a big launch party in New York Saturday night. And today they arrived in Philly. Okay. So, so uh, now how long, where, where are they going to end up? How long is the tour for, Blake? They will be going through November the 11th is the finale party in Huntington Beach, California. That's, so they'll be out for a while. That's a great place to go and kind of wrap up your party is in, in Huntington Beach, California. Yeah, um, you know, they're, they're going to be traveling down the East Coast, and they're going to dip down here to Texas, then back up to Vegas for World CryptoCon, and then on to California to finish the tour. Okay, that is awesome. So you're actually in Houston, correct? Yes, I am, and that's where um, Hawk is. Hawk is the Houston Area Women's Center, and they're the focus of our char charity this year. This is our first inaugural Tour de Crypto. And we're doing it to raise a million dollars in crypto for Hawk. Okay, very good, very good. So uh, tell us a little bit about that charity, because on our Wild West Crypto Show, we have a crypto giving. As you know, philanthropy is huge in the crypto space. And I mean, it's part, it's part of what draws our heart to the things we do. Tell us about the Hawk charity. What do they do? Sure. Um, they are a charitable organization that's been in existence since 1977. And they shelter, counsel, and help um, men, women, children that have been domestically or sexually abused. Okay. They have a, yeah, they have a confidential uh, shelter location where they house about 2,000 people a year. They have a 24-7 hotline where they take about 40,000 calls a year. Um, they are just a, a tremendous organization that has the highest ratings possible on Charity Navigator. They're very transparent. That that is awesome. I, you know what? That and that's a cause that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Part of the reason I'm one of seven boys raised on this little farm. And when I was about 15 years old, I'm middle child. I had three older and three younger. When I was about uh, 15 years old, we found out that my my dad had been beating the hell out of my mom for many years. And uh, oh no. It's, it's one of those things, and literally my oldest brother and I were there when she comes out, and I mean, she looked like a beaten dog, and I mean, it's a, for a 15-year-old kid, mm -hmm. it was tough to see, and I lost my dad this mm -hmm. year, and you know, they kind of mended fences and stuff, but so much of that goes on behind the scenes that people don't even realize that it's happening, you know? Oh, you're absolutely right, absolutely, yeah. and that's one of the things that they they really focus on trying to bring this to the forefront and let everyone know that it's happening behind closed doors and we have to talk about it. We have to discuss it. And the women and men that are in those types of relationships have to come forward and get help. Right. And sometimes that's very hard to do. Well, and it's like you said, they have that shelter. What my mom ended up doing, and this is one of those things that, um, you know, that a lot of people that face adversity do she ended up finding a, uh, an organization in San Antonio, actually became a United Way organization. In 1986, my mom was Woman's Day Magazine Woman of the Year for the things that she did for battered women and children and everything else and the things she did. So it's a cause that I've been oh, wow. involved in for many, many years. And God bless you guys for what y'all are doing with that. Well, thank you. Um, it, it's been really exciting. Um, the message resonates with everyone. There are a lot of people that are excited to get behind it. Um, we've, we've gotten a lot of great positive feedback. The people on crypto Twitter have just really been nice and helpful, you know, cause really we just need to spread the word. Um, sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's all about um, 
mass adoption and getting the mass involved. You know, we don't need tons of Bitcoins from one person. We just need everybody to participate. And if everybody participates, whatever amount they can, you know, we'll raise that million dollars. You bet. Absolutely. Well, you know, I can tell you, Blake, that, uh, and, and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to come and get on so that we can, you know, create our awareness. I know Bruce went up there and Bruce is, you know, he's one of our partners and I call him the hardest working man in crypto. And trust me, he earns that <laughs> every day, you know? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. But what we want to do is we want to, you know, per some of the emails that we exchange, I want to have your guys on where they are um, a couple of times a week. I want to do a segment uh, once a week. But a couple of times a week, do some little uh, updates as to where they are and where they're headed. Because what I'd like to do is um, is have a, kind of a greeting committee when they come into different towns. And I'm going to uh, deploy Cassidy and some of my team to go and lay some groundwork as y'all map out across the country so that uh, people know that they're coming. And then we'll do what we can with the Wild West Crypto Show and all of our assets to, uh, to, you know, speak this as loud as we can out there. So it really does make a difference. Yeah, well, we appreciate that. Um, we are definitely scheduling meet and greets in all the cities that we stop in. Um, we're at a small blockchain conference meeting tomorrow night in Philly. Then we're going to be in DC where we're going to meet up with Bruce on Thursday night. Good. Uh, then we're headed to Charlotte, um, meeting another blockchain group and then down on to Atlanta. So yeah, every stop we have, we're scheduling meetups and we're trying to put the word out and you know get as many people to attend as we can. Absolutely, and are you gonna be hooking up with the crew different places? Obviously they're coming to Houston, but I mean, when they go to, y'all are going to Austin, you're not coming through San Antonio. You know, we've got our brand new studio that we built and actually did our first, uh, did our first uh, broadcast from there this past week. And so I'd love to have you guys come to Kerrville into our studio so that we can, you know, catch an on-site interview there. I mean, there's nothing like the wild, wild west, you know. <laughs> no, I actually looked at it today. Um, if they, they're going from Austin to El Paso. Okay. And the distance is basically the same if they cut down to Kerrville and then go to El Paso. It's only about a five-mile difference. Oh, that would be awesome. Not only that, if they're riding their bikes through there, that's beautiful country coming across there. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. And, and it avoid, and hopefully it'll help them avoid some of the hill country out near uh, Lake LBJ in that area through Austin, you know, out past Austin. So um, yeah, it gets pretty hilly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so they uh, they're riding their bikes on this whole thing, and I take it that they've got a little support crew that is running with them. And then are they? Uh, y'all got hotels and stuff you're staying in. How are y'all working that out? Man, we we. They rented an RV. Um, it sleeps four. We have a driver, a videographer, and the two riders. So they're going to sleep in the RV as much as they can uh, because, you know, we're, we're trying to save cost here. Um, you know, this is basically Jason and I doing this out of our own pocket. You know, we're raising money through sponsors, but, um, you know, they're – going to do the best they can with the conditions they have. And, you know, I encouraged them to go ahead and maybe sleep in a hotel room occasionally just to get some good rest. But, uh, you know, it's new. It's just starting. So, so far, so good. We'll, we'll see how it is once they get to Houston here. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me, let me tell you something. And I told you when we got on this, and you can see the curtain in the background, I'm in my 40-foot motor coach as we speak. And, uh, it, you know, we we live in this thing like I mean you know you acclimate it they're actually pretty comfortable nowadays not like they were in the old days when we were kids growing up you know oh yeah 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 but um, good so, yeah. so give, me, give me a little bit of your background stuff how how, how long have you been in crypto and what kind of uh, you know the other guys what kind of made y'all move into this okay yeah we um I'm a lawyer by trade been uh, practicing for 22 years and I got involved in crypto. Uh, summer of 2017. Okay. Um, you know, I had heard about it long before then, but never paid much attention to it. And uh, finally dipped my toe in the water last year. And it was actually through the Electra community that I met um, Jason. Okay. And Jason and I became, uh, you know, Twitter friends, I guess you'd call it. And 
he approached me earlier this year about doing the tour that, you know, he said he'd always had a goal to ride across the United States and he had the time to do it now. Wanted to know if I'd be involved. And I was like, absolutely. And so we uh, just started putting this thing together and, you know, worked on it. And um, it just so happened that one night uh, Ronnie Moaz was online and I know he's got a big uh, charitable organization, loves to do, uh, philanthropy work and he said he would help out and then he got us connected with world crypto con and they're donating five percent of their ticket sales to hawk so i mean this thing just kind of blew up overnight and we're super excited about it well that is awesome well we're certainly gonna i'm sure you know but we're on about 80 terrestrial stations across the country and that was part of my whole deal with this is that you know mass adoption of cryptocurrencies is really what our mission is and in order to do that, we've got to reach, you know, we, we talk about it being the wild, wild west. And, but we got to reach old guys out there in their pickup trucks, you know, as they're running back and forth to the ranch and all that stuff so that we can teach them what cryptos are. When, when it all comes from the internet and podcast, it's most of it singing to the choir, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's what they're going to do on the tour. You know, they are, uh, they're going to be interviewing people. They're going to be visiting charitable organizations to educate them on, the benefits of accepting crypto. You bet. Absolutely. Why? I tell you what, Blake, uh, I'll get with Cassidy when I get back to uh, Kerrville on Wednesday and I'll get with Cassidy and Bobby, you know, part of my team and have them so that we put up on our website, kind of following you guys. And we will plan to a couple of times a week, um, you know, catch up with your guys out there in the field and stuff and do exactly what we're doing. Some zoom calls and stuff from wherever they are so that, we can keep this in the forefront of uh, folks as y'all traverse across the country. Yeah, that'd be great. And I'm sure they'd love to do it. Um, they're, they're taking videos. We got the video videographer with them and they're having a blast right now. You know, they, uh, they're in Philly today. They went and took some pictures by the Rocky statute and, you know, looked at some other monuments. And like I said, they have the party tomorrow night. So yeah, it, that would be great. They'd love to connect with you guys. And obviously I'm available anytime too. Um, you had asked me earlier if I was going to be meeting with the guys. Um, they're going to be going through Baton Rouge, where I grew up. Okay. So I'll probably meet them there. And my guess is I'll follow them to Austin, and uh, hopefully I'll come see you too in Kerrville. That would be awesome. That would, We would yeah. certainly love that. Well, I tell you what, obviously, and, you know, as you would imagine, we've blown a 12-minute segment a little over that, and that's the way it typically goes at the speed of crypto. Um, sure. Sure. So Really appreciate your time today, Blake. Do you have a website or anything where people can go on? Obviously, folks, you can go to the wildwestcryptoshow.com. We'll have info there. But how do people find you guys directly? Yeah, tourdecrypto.com is our website. And you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook with the same moniker, Tour de Crypto. That is um, awesome. And then, yeah, you can follow me at Blake Rizzo 24 while they're out peddling, I'm usually the one providing all the updates online and, and you know, kind of keeping the crypto community informed of what, what they're doing and where they are. Good deal, good deal. Well, let me tell you something. They got about 60 days in the saddle, so I'm sure they'll be a little saddle sore. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I all think right. So. Hey, listen, appreciate what you guys are doing. Look forward to following you guys and can't wait to meet y'all when, uh, when you come to Kerrville. All right, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. All right, you bet, buddy. We will be okay. In touch. Take care.